Hey everybody, Brett from Laser Time here, and this time to talk about The Legend of Zelda. Now, as you know, it's over 30 years old, making it one of gaming's most revered and long-lived franchises out there. And with Breath of the Wild, the latest release upon us, that obviously gets me thinking not about the legacy or the timeline or the most popular Zelda of all time. No, it gets me thinking about the box and is it gold? Because you see, I think a big part of the original Zelda's success, at least in the West, was its reflective gold cartridge. While the original Famicom version was indeed a yellowish disc, and later a green cart, the Western release looked more like something out of Dungeons and Dragons than Japan. Instead of a betuniced anime lad adorning the cover, the box and cart in the US depicted a kingly crest, and little else. Just some proclamations of adventure that suggested you might fight a dragon, maybe an orc or something. Very tropey Western mythology stuff. But aside from a couple of vague slogans that promised adventure, there was this one really obvious call to action, a giant hole in the box that showed the gold cartridge it tucked inside. And this hint of, I know that's not real gold, but I'm six years old and just dumb enough to think it might be real, suggested a sense of adventure or mystery or treasure, something else that made this game stand out from the rest. Especially when most other games at the time had hyperbolic art that made big promises, but you knew the truth would never measure up to what that art promised. So obviously it was this glitzy packaging that probably pulled a lot of people in, not the fairly bland box art on the cover. And once you got that cart out, man, I remember the first time seeing that laying in a sunny patch on a friend's floor, the light bouncing off in all directions, which I tried to recapture here, but not quite as nice. But it seemed to illuminate the entire corner of the room. It's hard to capture in pictures, it's hard to get across in a video on your phone. But I'm telling you, this extra touch made Zelda seem important. It made it leap off of retail shelves, leap off of your own collection sitting on the floor or on a shelf. It just seemed different and more important because of this reflective gold cartridge. As a slight aside, it's worth noting again that this is a very American or Western thing because in Japan, most of the Famicom carts were different colors anyway. So the idea of it being gray or pink or blue, it didn't really matter. Almost everything there was a different color. But still, Zelda, the reflection is what made it different. Anyway, Zelda 2 in the US followed suit and kept the gold flowing, and this kind of sort of set a precedent, an expectation that every Zelda would be gold. That was what made it Zelda. But for whatever reason, the series would lose the Midas touch after Zelda 2, up to and including NES re-releases that were redone in ho-hum, boring, drab, gray carts. Re-releases of Zelda 1 and 2 coming in gray carts later on down the line, that's one thing. But when A Link to the Past arrived in a standard Super NES box, standard gray cartridge, I and many other people were like, the hell? And this departure, this break in the gold standard, lasted for six years and includes Link's Awakening for the Game Boy, which, like Link to the Past, shipped in a regular gray Game Boy cartridge. And after several years of no Zelda games at all, it was 1998's Ocarina of Time that returned Zelda to this beautiful gold standard. Now, the card itself wasn't reflective like the NES material, but the box was practically a stained glass window, blasting holy Zelda goodness anywhere the sun could be found. Up next was Majora's Mask, which did come in a gold cart, but also had a lenticular label, an extra level of specialness to the proceedings. The Majora's Mask box, however, ditched the usual gold coloring for this ominous black and purple appearance that makes it stand out even more. Now, it's also important to note the N64 era, specifically the Majora's Mask launch, November 2000, went whole hog with the gold stuff. In addition to the gold cartridge, in addition to the new label, they launched alongside a gold controller. And this was hardly the first or last themed controller, but this was pushed alongside Majora as a companion piece and boy did it work on me and then in 2003 we get wind waker the first disc based zelda game i just wonder what ganon's up to no we're not doing that it's the first one moving on so yes while wind waker could not have a reflective gold cartridge nintendo did find a suitable way to replicate that experience with the blasting radiance of the wind waker disc it's gold it's reflective and cds are reflective anyway but it casts a really nice reflection and at least felt like zelda it was gold it was bright it was shiny it did the job well and what's interesting for weirdos who like to think about game packaging is that before and after wind waker there were numerous other handheld titles that unlike pokemon came in regular gray cases pokemon always gets a red or blue yellow gold silver whatever case for each new game zelda the only other nintendo series that has a colored to attach to it, gold, didn't have anything special going on, and even Minish Cap dropped the gold standard for some reason that I don't understand. The next major release, 2006, Twilight Princess, which had a goldish label, but nothing like Wind Waker's blinding take. The GameCube version of Twilight Princess is somewhere in between. It's not quite as bold as Wind Waker, but is a tad more lustrous than the Wii version. DS titles Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks did even less, sporting the look and trappings of any given DS game. Not even gold foil on the label. 
A few years later, Pokemon would once again dunk on Zelda with its luminous heart gold box. This thing was so very Zelda. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. I was convinced that Nintendo of America was preparing us for Ocarina of Time 3D or Skyward Sword, some kind of new reflective gold box, gold container for a new Zelda. But that didn't really happen. Because when Skyward Sword arrived in 2011, alongside all the 25th anniversary promotional packaging, it did have a nice gold paper label that was pretty and it was bright. And it again, it did make you feel the anniversary warm fuzzies. But once you open the box, the disc inside was pretty standard. But the soundtrack disc was gold. Okay, I'll take it. And that brings us more or less to today. People who are 30 and up, maybe even 25 and up, probably associate Zelda with gold, but it has not been consistent and there's probably more Zelda games that aren't than are. And even if you tack on things like gold Wii remotes, gold GBA SPs, gold 3DSs, there's still more typical packaged Zelda stuff than there is associated with the gold. Even the new game, Breath of the Wild in the Switch, nothing gold, regular cart, regular box, the whole gold thing isn't there, which is extra strange given how much Nintendo, at least Nintendo of America, was trying to tie the original Zelda in with Breath of the Wild, a lot of imagery that they would invoke through trailers and screenshots that would seem to prey upon our nostalgia for the original Legend of Zelda and that box and that gold cartridge. But yeah, Ocarina, Majora 3D, they both had regular gray carts. Link Between Worlds did have some nice foil paper, kind of like Skyward Sword, but the card inside was a typical 3DS card, which granted, even if they made it gold, it's like, it's what, going to be this big and what am I going to do with that and how impressive is it to see it doesn't light up the room and it can't shake it and reflect it back at the camera and it's not so much a childhood nostalgia thing it really is different from all the other Zelda products that came after it's bright it's reflective it really leaps off the shelf it's really interesting and I really wonder why that same material wasn't really used again but come to think of it of all the amiibos of all the variants of all the stuff that's clogging shelves what character has a gold amiibo all their own is it Link? Is it the one with the history of gold packaging, gold characters, gold boxes, anything? No, it's Mario. Mario has a gold amiibo for no particular reason. Doesn't matter. Completely irrelevant point to bring up, but it's just one of those like Jackie Chan faces where you're like, you could have, I would have bought another one. But if you like this kind of navel gazing bullshit, please watch the rest of our stuff on this channel. We've talked about uh, Nintendo's weird naming conventions. We talked about the Castlevania timeline. We played through all of Kingdom Hearts against our better judgment. Uh, but thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Check us out more on lasertimepodcast.com and uh, catch us more on Twitch too. We do way too much. There's not enough time to possibly consume all this crap. Thank you for watching.